Welcome to the Local Marketing Source Weekly Update, brought to you by LocalMarketingSource.com. This week's Local Marketing Update is brought to you by Scott Gallagher. Scott is the co-founder of Local Marketing Source and has become the recognized expert in providing online marketing services to local businesses. Follow Scott on Twitter at ScottGallagher5 and on Facebook.com slash Scott P. Gallagher. Hey, well, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Scott Gallagher here with Local Marketing Source, bringing you a weekly local marketing industry update. Now, next week's LMS member call is going to be Wednesday, January 14th at 4 p.m. Eastern. Now, first, I should give a little bit of a warning. Uh, my internet's been really wacky today, and I've been on the line and uh, for the last 20 minutes, and it's just a go-to webinar it seems to disconnect and reconnect. So, hang in there. Uh, I'm actually working from home today. Uh, the kids are at home. It's a very, very cold day in Chicago. We hit negative 40 last night. And that's, uh, I don't need to tell you negative 40 Fahrenheit or negative 40 Celsius because they're the exact same temperature. And no matter how you put it, that's cold. <laughs> that's, that's cold. It's, you know, it's got all the snow on the window and everything and just trying to hunker down inside. So, yeah, bear with me if the internet goes in and out. Um, this week we got a couple of different things to cover, uh, phone number tracking, you know, this has been a topic of discussion for quite some time. We're going to talk about what some of the search engines are doing with phone number tracking and how that may change and what we might see into, uh, 2015. And this is actually, well, this is our first call. Oh no, we did do a call last week on the second, my bad, uh, of the year. Um, next, we're going to talk a little bit about cars, the automobile industry, and how the automobile industry is going to have a big impact in local. Excuse me one second. I got a cat that's trying to get into my room here. Come on. When I work at home, I, I have a small office in my house, and I got two desks in here, and, you know. I guess it's kind of like my man cave, um, but when I work, my animals, all three of them get hungered in here and they just hang out with me wherever I go. So you might hear a meow from time to time. All right, so back to cars, getting into the local search engines and what that means and what, uh, how, how we got to start thinking about that as marketers and what we're going to do and move forward with some of, some of the automobile industry. And finally, um, we're going to talk a little bit about what the industry is putting out into the marketplace for local SEO in 2015 and how the the industry itself is continuing to educate small businesses and whatnot and what to look at. And we're going to call this the big picture of local SEO. All right. We've got some new students this week, so I just want to give a quick little uh, rundown. Uh, you're using GoToWebinar software. You can ask questions. You can post questions and type questions as I go through with this, or you can raise your hand, and I can unmute you at the end of the call, and we can get on on the telephone uh, or on GoToWebinar live. I personally prefer to talk to people, but uh, whatever's suitable, uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do what we can. All right, so I'm just going to go and check to see if there's any questions or problems and no, nobody's posted anything right now people are on the line and let's let's go so phone number call tracking um, okay am I back I saw I just lost a call or a connection. I'm sorry, guys. We spend all this money to have good internet connectivity, and I guess the cold weather is affecting Comcast. I'm seeing some weird, okay, connection restored. All right, let's get back to this. I apologize. So uh, phone number call tracking. Um, you know, businesses and, and marketing like to know where they're, money goes and and what customers they get from that money spent and there's so many different marketing channels 
that businesses have employed call tracking. So if they put a, you know, they put an ad on the radio and it generates phone calls, they'd like to know, well, how many phone calls did that radio ad generate? And they can put it back. And so on the internet, with everything being electronic, in theory, we can track everything. And then, you know, you'll have some business owners that you'll work with. And I think one of my clients said, it's just a big battle. Um, he's like, well, everything can be tracked. And yeah, everything in theory can be tracked, but it doesn't mean that that's the best way to go. And there's some cost to it. And so some of the conflicts that we're finding, um, there's a disconnect or a separation of call tracking on the paid side and on the, we'll call the local organic side. Everybody on the line should know the differences. Uh, what's Ralph saying here? Oh, Ralph. Okay. Are you able to hear us, Ralph? You're, you're logged in and, and whatnot. Oh, you see my kitten right now on my lap. It's just so, I just read an article on CNN that somebody in Texas, some lady just got charged 85 years old for stealing her neighbor's cats, killing them, skinning them and making fur coats out of their fur. They found 34, so they found 20 fur coats in her house, and it takes 30 cats per fur coat. Wow. So call tracking, difference between paid and organic. And now these search engines, you, you, you know, the disconnect is, is, is today, January of 2015, we're not where we need to be. We're going to be somewhere else. And the search engines have changed their stance throughout the years, the last few years in terms of what could be call tracked and how call tracking should work and how it shouldn't and some of the confusions and, and whatnot. And, you know, you start to get into questions like, all right, let's say I implement call tracking and I'm a marketer and I create a press release. And I distribute that press release to the newspaper and I put a call tracking number on there. I create another piece of content, an article, and I distribute it to the local chamber of commerce and put a different call tracking number on there. Both of them generate phone calls. Both of them generate customers. And we can then track exactly where those customers came from. It makes sense. One big challenge, of course, as a marketer is, well, we deal with dozens of channels on a monthly basis. So the relationship over a year could, you know, you could be managing a couple hundred different call tracking numbers. But, okay, that's logistics. We can handle logistics, and we're not going to say no to somebody because we can't figure out logistics. But you get these customers. What is the best way to grow a local business or any business, for that matter? What is the best form of marketing that has ever existed? Word of mouth marketing. In other words, if you have a business that you provide a good service at a valuable price and you have customers that are happy, you're gonna, your business is going to grow based off of word of mouth advertising. So to maximize word of mouth advertising, you've got to have two things, good product and good service. If you don't have a product, you got to have good service, obviously, and that translates into happy customers. But if you can have happy customers, you're going to get word of mouth advertising. How do you track that? So I create all this marketing material. I track it. And then the business is a good business, and they grow their business through word of mouth advertising that you can't track. Unless we implemented chips into every single customer and recorded every single conversation they've had in, in a given day, we can't track effectively word of mouth advertising. Yeah, you know, one could argue and say, well, you could do this and well, yeah, you can do that. Okay, fine. We're talking big picture here, businesses across the board and standards. And that's what the search engines are looking at and they recognize this stuff. So, there's no value in having call tracking in a lot of organic settings. In other words, the search engines today are saying having a call tracking number on a press release is not effective. 
press release is supposed to be an organic piece of material that an audience wants to consume. Now, if I'm paying for advertisements on the radio, well, I do want to know where my money goes. And the search engines definitely agree that if you're spending money, especially if they've got platforms like AdWords, that businesses will want to know, hey, am I making money from this? So call tracking has gone through a lot of different changes in the paid side. And you've heard my sides and my arguments on the organic sides. Now, Google and Bing have recently made changes that they no longer allow phone numbers in PPC ads or PPC copy. This is effective February 15th, 2015. Until January, until June 15th, any ads that still have phone numbers in it will still run and they'll be implemented in the legacy, but you make any subtle, any changes to them and they won't be approved and after June 15th of this year. So what does that mean? If you want to get your phone number into ads, you've got to utilize their tracking and that's utilizing extensions, call extensions or click to call functionality. Um, in other words, the free ride of getting phone numbers on there, what's happening is we are probably going to see, and I haven't read any of this, but I'm going to speculate that even within the next 12 months, we're going to see PPC advertising based off of volume as well as impressions. That's good because it's like a click, you know, with paid advertising, you've got the ability to pay for a click or the ability to pay for impressions. Well, now you're probably going to be able to pay for phone calls and there's, there's value in that. All right, moving on. So cars, you know, one thing that I, I, I've pushed ever since local came out in 2009 is that, a local business does not have a local SEO strategy and then a social media strategy and then a mobile marketing strategy. These are not these are not channels on their own. When we look at mobile, for example, you've got a cell phone, you've got a tablet. And then people use laptops, desktops. And now our televisions are smart TVs. And so rather than having specific channels um, based off of device or, or based off of the type of device, um, I've looked at the channels as display channels. So, for example, if we're going to create marketing material and it's going to be consumed on a laptop and somebody's looking for, let's say, a local chiropractor, the activity that they're going to be doing when they do a search for a chiropractor on a laptop may be a little different than if they're mobile on the road and doing a search on their cell phone. Or if they're searching for chiropractor in their living room while they're sitting on their couch, maybe they're more likely to be learning about the practice of chiropractic care as opposed to finding a local business. And so based off of the display device and where we are with that display device, information is going to be put out to us. Televisions are, are definitely a piece of this now. And with smart TVs, uh, it's not something our industry is talking about too much, um, but it should be. And we now have, you know, a, a different display channel as well to consider, and that's automobiles. You know, with the ad and push and the technology that's in cars these days, uh, technologies like OnStar, for example, are getting into the local game and becoming local search engines. And so GM is making an initiative that they're turning their cars into local search engines with the OnStar system. They're probably the leaders in the industry. And, you know, they're likely going to try to develop some of their own search functionality. Uh, they will likely have some of their own algorithm. But I have to suspect that built into the algorithm that, you know, when we start to look at usability functionality and that's 
you know, the mapping functionality that we put in the websites and the easy, the ability to, you know, easily map yourself based off of where you are and to find that. Those are going to be functions that are more likely going to show up in the tops of the results for people that are using searches from their cars, as an example. Um, so it's interesting. It's, uh, you know, another, a whole other game. And th this is actually going to lead into the last thing I'm going to talk about today. And that's local SEO at the big picture. Um, you know, the, the, the articles I'm reading, for example, you know, one utilizes a microscope and says, you know, SEO, local SEO is not about utilizing a small, using a microscope and, and looking at everything specifically. And I like the way that they put that and the way that they talked about that because, you know, I just got asked a question yesterday from a new student, um, you know, what about tools and whatnot? And I notice, you know, there's a trend that people really get hung up on, on tools. They want to know every possible tool that's out there and how every tool and all the tools I use. And I always say, well, I don't get hung up on tools. You know, there was a day that I would look at the keyword density of content that was written on a page. And I knew that 5.6% was the keyword density that we were looking for. And we'd write content based off of that. We'd look at all the backlinks of competitors, every specific backlink, and evaluate them, and look at the key performance indicators, establish KPIs for every single keyword, and prioritize these keywords. And, you know, the, the further along I got, and the more practice I got with, with local or with internet marketing for that matter, the more I realized that, you, you know, there's two types of individuals in our industry or two types of mindsets, let me say. And, you know, there's, it's very simple that I, I see it like there's the artistic mindset and there's the scientific mindset. And I think you definitely need a little flavor of, of both, but it's a matter of what hat you're really putting on. And so if I'm empowered to market the local business um, and I'm wearing my scientific hat, for example, I, I'm going to measure specifically how many times specific keywords are. And then I'm going to spend the time in prioritizing that. And um, I'm going to look at the keyword density ratios and I'm going to, look at a lot of the ones and the zeros in the algorithm and, and know that, you know, I'm supposed to have a link link spread of a maximum of 20% for any anchor text. And it just gets very, very daunting when you try to understand the thousands of factors that search engines are looking for and to create this material when you can look at it and say, well, forget everything, forget the internet. I'm a marketer and I'm trying to make a piece of material that is the best fit for this business that is going to resonate with an audience. And when you look at the outcome of these two different mindsets, you get two different pieces of, of material and one tends to work better than the other. Well, slowly over time in the last four or five years has the artistic mindset prevailed over the scientific mindset. In other words, when you're creating material that gets liked and gets viewed by real people that are local, you're not buying views, you're not buying a whole bunch of Twitter followers, you're actually getting real people that are local that have Facebook accounts and have Google accounts and leave reviews on Yelp, are real people, the search engines know these are real people that are sharing your material. Guess what? When you build material that's better now in 2015, 2014, 2013, we were winning at the SEO games. And so when I say look at the big picture, you know, I get questions all the time. Well, I made this change on my website and it hasn't helped. You know, I've gone and I've, I've acquired 20 profiles. And it doesn't help. Well, there are best practices that we follow, okay? And they're very simple best practices. So, for example, a best practice of a profile on Google is going to be completed 100%. Well, duh. There's reasons why Google had all those fields in there in the first place. 
Of course, if you don't complete it 100%, search engine's gonna be less likely. They built it, it's theirs. <laughs> they think this is, information's important, so give it to them. Um, so yeah, big picture, you know, completing your, your profile 100% and making sure that you've got a good abundance, you know, you've got exposure and you're managing all your profiles on all the sites that are big, like the Yelps of the worlds and Yahoo's and Apple's and, and whatnot. Well, duh, of course that makes sense. So when somebody starts looking at all the different little factors and whatnot, they get hung up on well, why isn't this working or why isn't that or, or whatnot? There's just a whole big picture of, of the best practices that ultimately really need to be done. And it's rather simple. These are the three pillars of local search that we teach at Local Marketing Source. That's profiles, social profiles, additional citations. Um, I'm not referring to profile citations. I'm referring to marketing citations like being published in the local newspaper and of course reviews and reviews are a, a facet that are often missed quite a bit and reviews are the toughest pillar to work with with a local business it's very very tough because if you've got a shitty client that offers a shitty service yeah it's tough. You've got to have a talk with that client. We've we've had 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 talks with with our clients. You know, I can think of a taxi company, and we had to get some drivers fired. Can you imagine going to your client as a marketer and saying, "Man, I know this guy's been with you for five years, but you got to fire him." We've had secretaries that have been fired because they're not effectively converting. They're, we're generating phone calls. And they're not converting. You have to have these talks because that review pillar is that important. And in order to win in reviews, you just have to have a good business. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Google makes businesses better businesses. All right. So on that note, guys, uh, this is going to come to the conclusion of the weekly update. I'm just going to take a couple of minutes right now and I will not a couple of minutes, a few seconds, 30 seconds. I'll be back. And I see that I've got some questions that have been put down. So I will. Uh, answer these. Thanks for watching the local marketing industry update. We've got these things coming out every single week. So if you liked with what you heard, just click the button right above me right here to subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to get a little bit more, right over here, go check out localmarketingsource.com. We've got free reports that you can grab. You can even register for our free marketing course to get in and see the portal. Or just go ahead and follow us on some of the social channels. We'll be around. Until next time.